Josh Taylor versus Tiafimo Lopez fight, you know, we had talked about um, all the all the intangibles, like the psychological state of both fighters. And to be honest with you, in the lead up to the fight, with some of the interviews Tiafimo was doing, where he actually got in a verbal altercation with his own father during a Mark Kriegel interview on ESPN, I li- I think I texted you and Rob. I said, "Bet the farm on Taylor." It just looked like Tia Fimo was having like a a, a psychological meltdown yeah, right in front everyone of everyone. Everyone thought that, not just you. But I didn't think that. I tweeted. Yeah. I'll read you my tweet. I Go tweeted. Ahead. I had a lot of tweets out there. I know you read them, and I know a lot of people read them, and I'm I'm glad they did. Um, but I tweeted that Lopez has the same ability, I believe, as Floyd Mayweather did to perform under emotional chaos. Because for them, it's almost normal. They've lived in it. And I I guess it turned out to be along those lines. Because I don't see any of this stuff out there in that crazy place called the internet unless somebody, you know, brings it to my attention, right? And um, But I got a little something to pick from in between my teeth or my toes or, you know, um, whatever... Whatever excuse for being rude uh, for a moment is, because I I wasn't comparing his talent to Floyd's or his boxing style to him, obviously, or saying he's as good as Floyd. I was just making one point. He handles emotional stress like him when there's a fight. You know, Teofimo, as you said, Ken, I mean, you're right. You sent me that text. You're very forthright about it. You said, bet the farm on Taylor. And I bet you a lot of people went to my bookie and bet the farm. I didn't bet the farm. You know how you can tell they did? Because the line at the start of the fight, I think it opened. He, Taylor was a slight favorite at the opening when we first started breaking down the fight a few weeks ago. But at the right before the fight started, I think he was as high as a plus, a minus two twenty five to two fifty favorite, two and a half to one. And I mean, yeah. t- for all intents and purposes, Tiafimo beat the brakes off him. He outboxed them all night. Well, long. not according I mean, to two judges. We'll get to that more we'll later. Get, we'll but, get to but that. We'll get, uh, we'll get to that more later. Why are you making me yell so early in this show? <laughs> I just Why? To give you, I wanted to give the fans perspective, or at least my perspective of how I saw the fight, and then hear what you have to say. Because what I saw, and again, I don't watch it from a judge's perspective. I watch it like a fan. And when I look at that fight, I'm like, I'd rather be Tiafimo after basically every single round. And I and I had no bias. If anything, I might have leaned, leaned slightly towards Taylor. But my God, it was... It looked like a boxing exhibition. Sure, t- Taylor has a. Rob c- will clearly- get the cards. Rob will get those two judges' yeah, cards. I've and got listen, them here too. two judges, two judges, Ken, that if you go out and sign the petition we have for the National Commission, that on the Monday after the National Commission is formed, they will receive pink slips. Do you know what a pink <laughs> slip is? That <laughs> means <laughs> that means that your services for work are no longer needed around here. <laughs> Let me say this before I turn it over to you, is that when I looked at that fight, I'm like, okay, you could find a few rounds for Taylor if you really tried, and I'm not, again, I have only no the bias early one rounds. the only the, Only right. the early rounds. But I'll tell you this. I'll say for Josh Taylor, my God, that dude is tough. He took a freaking beating. He was frustrated. Well, I he think was almost late. out. He was almost out in the 10th round. Yeah, I mean, he was, yeah. Uh, 11, he uh, 12th it. round, 12th round. Incredible 12th. toughness. And um, my God, like you said with the judges, if Teofimo doesn't win that last round so decisively, we have a freaking draw. Are you... How is this even like this is a monster fight. But here's the other frustrating thing from the promotion side is this is a mega fight. They're fighting in the freaking... The theater at Madison Square Garden, I mean, I don't know if the fans just don't care about these guys or the promotion did a bad job, but this seems like the biggest injustice of the night. Not a pay-per-view fight, but we've got Broner the night before on a pay-per-view fight against some attorney. I'll tell you another thing it put a light on. And in the, well, in the breakdown, the analysis of the fight beforehand, I picked, it was a hard pick, but I picked Teofimo. We, I had to make a pick. I picked Teofimo. And, you know, I, not with great confidence, but I picked him because, A, as I said earlier, and I tweeted this day before the fight and the day of the fight, 
that I thought if anyone could handle that kind of emotional turmoil, it would be him. Much like Floyd Mayweather used to always handle it. He used to handle it the way he eat Cheerios in a breakfast with milk. I mean, like it was nothing. And I just also felt, as I said, that he was more talented, that that Taylor was more buttoned up technically in a lot of ways, but and more traditionally, but that Lopez was just more just just had more ability, more explosive, quicker, faster. And when I say explosive, faster, better puncher, and explosive, sudden, quick, yep. quick twitch if you want, you know, fibers, muscles. And so that that played out. I'm not always right, but I that one I was I was on. Uh, and again, not strong, strong because of all the craziness that was going on. But one thing that it also we highlighted, and we were on the button with this, Ken. You asked me a very, just a very pertinent question at the time. You said, Teddy, who do you think the promoters want to win? If it comes down to a decision, who do you think the promoters will want to win? And I said, I think probably Taylor. Because you, were all right the, on the, you were right on the money there. All the trouble that he that him and his father, Lopez and his father has you know created for them, uh, not being loyal, you know, leaving, coming back, the whole whatever, the whole thing. Other fighters have done it too, but the whole thing, and the way his stock had dropped up into this fight, his stock had dropped. He lost to Cambosis. He struggled in his fight, his last fight with Martin. Uh, the same way Taylor struggled in his last fight too, where I thought both of them could have lost those fights. Easily. But, but at the end of the day, I said, they probably want Taylor. He can make money across the pond. You know, he's easier to deal with from at least on the surface, from what we can see. And sure enough, I said, if that's true, they're going to position their guys, their judges. They're going to go to the bullpen. And they ain't bringing Mario and Rivera out of there, you know, Ken. <laughs> they ain't. They, they, they better <laughs> not bring him out if they're facing the Red Sox. They're, they're not bringing. Yeah, they're not bringing him out. They're they're bringing their judges out there to do their business. Yep. To do their business, and it's not good business. It's not. Nope. It's dirty business. They did their best, though. They should they should keep using those guys because they will go to the friggin' f they'll go to hell for them. Did, Lopez almost got robbed from that fight. Like it was. It's insane. If can you imagine if they gave that to Josh Taylor or a draw? Yell it from the mountain top. Yell the truth from the mountain tops. If he doesn't win that twelfth, the way he does, uh, well, was, am I correct with those two? Yeah, right. It would have been a draw. Win, it would have been a draw. Would have been a <laughs> draw. draw. It was, I mean, which is crazy. And, Team and Fimo won that not, fight easily. And Ken. You're right, Ken. And he was. You're right. the The body language was all you needed to see. That he said, "I'm the boss." It I was got a distinctive guy. moment, right, where he it did was, some like was. shuffle, it and was. I was like, "Oh shit!" It was. Teal's got and, him. And you know, it was. And you know what? He was the father. Was right because the son actually immediately responded. You know, I remember. I heard it. The son said, "I got him," and he did. He said, he did. "I got him." And he did. He had him figured out. Um, you know, I, as far as the analysis of the fight, I'm going to put out there something. Some people are going to probably push back a tiny bit. I don't think much, but a tiny bit. Some of the people that maybe think this stuff out a little bit more thoroughly and they think they're onto something, and maybe they are, but they're going to say something like, well, Maybe it should have been closer because Theo wasn't doing a lot. Of, it wasn't moving his hands a real lot. And the other guy was moving his hands. But, but the other guy wasn't landing, number one. Number two, I'll tell you why I thought it was not close. Theo controlled the rhythm of the fight. The other guy had no rhythm, the, whatever. But Theo, he controlled, the other guy looked robotic. But Theo created an, a, the rhythm, found the rhythm had the rhythm of the fight and he he landed the the more stunning 
telling punches, the more effective. All night long, he hurt him several times, and he landed them all night. He was never hurt by Taylor. And because of that, that's professional scoring criterion. It's not amateur. Who, it's not who throws. It's who lands and who impacts. He landed when he landed. He didn't throw a lot, and he impacted. But I'm sure there'll be someone, I want to see what you think of this, that will say that maybe Tio swayed certain people to think it was further apart because of, because, what's the word I'm looking for? His uh, pizzazz or or uh, um, flashiness um, because he was more flashy. You, you made a good point with his body language and dropping his hand sometimes, showing that he was in control, being a little flashy. But for me, he was being effective at the same time. But I'm sure there's some people that are going to say, the other guy was working, the other guy was trying, the other guy was strong, but for me, he wasn't effective. He was he was getting caught, and he was fighting a stupid fight. and But he was he was trying. And there'd be some people that would say, well, maybe that's why the judges had it close because the other guy got points to the general public for being flashy. And I, I'm going to knock that down. I, I get it. I could understand you maybe saying that and thinking that um, where it got people, it gets your attention, but it still has to be real. It still has to be effective. It still has to be tangible damage. And the tangible damage was put there by one guy, Teofimo. And I'm going to say this for the analysis. Teofimo, besides being quicker, more explosive, uh, uh, more explosive, more instinctual, besides all that and handling the pressure the way he did, he just had a... F- much smarter, more cerebral fight plan. The other guy fought a stupid fight. And I don't like to call people stupid, but he fought a dumb fight. He just walked in cold. And I talked about this in a pre-fight analysis, that neither guy should walk in cold, just walk in. That both got caught with counters in their prior fights and got hurt. And that they should look to counter, they should look to faint, They should look to jab. They should not just walk in cold. And for the most part, Taylor, the southpaw, walked in cold all night. He he fought a dumb fight. I I, I even tweeted during a fight, his trainer needs to tell him, look to catch Tio, especially early on. There were spots where Tio was reaching a little bit, lunging a little bit, a little vulnerable. Look to catch him with that... Southpaw right hook, the counter hook. Catch him on the way in. Don't go chasing him because you got a quick guy, an instinctual guy, a fluid guy, you know, a guy with quick twitch. If you chase him, you're going to walk into something. Let him come to you and, and, and counter him. Take advantage of some of his reckless aggression early on. Now, later on, that aggression worked for him because like Pacquiao used to do. He jumped in quick enough to get away with it, very explosive, and it had great results for him against Taylor. But early on, there were spots where you could have caught him coming in, and even later in the fight. But he didn't have that kind of mindset, Taylor, or that kind of preparation, that kind of fight plan at all. And and Teofimo might have been his own fight plan. He didn't get maybe any help from anybody in camp. But it was the right fight plan. It was an instinctual fight plan. He knew he had to use his speed, his instincts. He knew he had to counter. And you know what? He counterpunched beautifully. He countered this guy coming in. He took advantage of this guy coldly just walking in. And he countered the crap out of him. Um, and, he, and he used the right punches. He used the southpaw killer, the right hand. That's effective a lot of times against the lefty. He used that. And he mixed it up. He, um, he, he fought a really good fight. And I'm going to say something that's going to upset my brothers and sisters across the pond. But listen, the truth is the truth. You know, like Howard Cosell, the indomitable Howard Cosell used to say, just, I'm just 
telling it like it is. And I said this early, I'm on record. And they didn't like it the same way they didn't like when I said it about their beloved, their beloved, um, who is their beloved heavyweight over there? Um, that they, Joshua, yeah, their beloved heavyweight champ, Joshua. I said about him, I, I said it about Taylor. They're both overrated. 